During the last few years, we've ventured into a lot of different fields, and we've had the opportunity to meet and work with a lot of wonderful people. I only hope that we never lose sight of one thing, that it was all started by a mouse. Congratulations, Mr. Mickey Mouse. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Walt Daily. This is episode 68, and for those who don't know us by now, we're a Disney couple. One of us is a Disney fanatic, and one of us is Disney challenged, but somehow we've made a way to make this relationship work. Yeah. What's up? Nothing. I'm going to clean my glasses real quick. Okay. Because I know you hate that. (laughs) I just want to see more clearly into your eyes is all. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> but I feel like you okay. wouldn't you wouldn't actually clean your glasses unless it was bothering you. So this is not for me. It's for you. No, no, no. I told myself before this, I'm like, let me clean my glasses because she will hate me continually <laughs> if I don't. You sound stuffy. I'm a little. I'm a tad sick. I've been I've been traveling for the last week and I was like in five different cities. Really? And yeah. Because oh. like I had like a bunch of connection flights and I'm sure I caught something along the way. Hand hygiene, people practice your hand hygiene is this a way of announcing that you did not not necessarily i'm just saying (laughs) that's what it sounds like others that's disgusting others should should practice hand hygiene so it's not spreading to like normal places speaking of cities though on another note i read a fun fact earlier that the latitude of tampa like the city tampa in florida is the same latitude as mount everest Hmm. Is that crazy? That's wild. Does that change your whole perspective on the world a little bit? Mount Everest in Disney? In Nepal. Oh, okay. Like Mount Everest proper. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, it's not a huge deal to me, I guess, but... I just think it's fascinating, but anyways. But let's jump into headlines. Okay. Headlines. So, first headline, the gondolas have been seen traveling on the cables. So not just kind of mounted there, like in their white cover, so you can't see what they look like or what's inside of them, but they've actually been traveling along the cables back and forth. Mm -hmm. So that's a sign of progress. It looks like they are working. I wonder if there are people in them, though, because I feel like weight would make a difference. It would be funny if they had test dummies (laughs) inside them. They have like sandbags, maybe, or actual test dummies. No, like actual, like the the dudes with like the weird... like faces, <laughs> they should have those. Oh, I think the I think the faces they have sensors in them. Oh, okay. Well, anyways, so they're out and about. So progress is being made on the gondolas, and we saw the stations on our last trip, and they look awesome. It looks like a legit gondola station that you'd see yeah. in like a uh, like a ski resort. Yeah, it really looks like they've stole the ski resort stuff and brought <laughs> it to Disney. Yeah, they did. I'm gonna be concerned about the heat though, like. Because when you're in a snow resort, like, it's just really cold. Mm-hmm. But it's usually, you're, you know, you're dressed for that. Yeah. But you can't really account for the heat. I know. You can't dress for heat other than being not dressed. But then I think, but then here's the thing, though, about that is Disney is all outside anyway. It's true. So it's like the same thing. If you Ex- think about it, because you're if you're walking down the sidewalk or you're walking in Disney, mm-hmm. it's not like you're walking in air conditioning. But you're also technically not enclosed in a space with no... I mean, they say that there's going to be... I, they say that there's going to be breezy, you know, vents that are going to go through the gondola cars, so... Yeah. But I see where you're coming from, but I also see that it's not the same as walking outside. I think because so. Because you're in an not, enclosed space with, like, ten other people. And it's it's and then you think about it, too, like, assuming that they did the whole, you know, they're going to have breeze coming through. Mm-hmm. Like, the gondola's moving, so you'll ha- it'll be like a breeze on you. Yeah, so it's and actually... you wouldn't be expending an energy by walking. Exactly. So maybe it's better. Yeah. So we don't know. I just think we overreacted when we heard that it wasn't going to be air-conditioned. 
is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> okay, because that was like six months ago. <laughs> I know, I'm just saying, like, people are probably still wondering, like, I'm not going to do that because of the heat, but I think it's just an overreaction potentially. Yeah, I mean, I think Disney knows that they don't want people getting heat stroke on their property. Yeah. It does a direct result. And, oh my goodness, unless there's a warning, you may, you have the potential to get heat stroke on this ride. Please proceed with caution. Pre-existing mm-hmm. medical conditions. Because of what we just went over, I don't think that's no, I know. a I'm just, warning. I'm just saying. Like, I'm just saying. Like, if, if they do put that, then we need to be careful. Okay. Okay. Anywho, next headline is a park update. In regards to Hollywood Studios, Beauty and the Beast stage show is going to be closed from February 24th through March 9th, just ahead of spring break time. Okay. Not breaking news, but I feel like... Yeah, it doesn't sound very exciting. Not breaking news, but I feel like it's important to mention that Beauty and the Beast is still going strong at Hollywood Studios. It is a Broadway caliber show, and I'm glad that it seems like they're refreshing it in whatever way they are, which is a good sign because that means it'll be sticking around for a while. How come we've never gone? I've gone. I've never gone to that thing. I've never, I've never, I don't know why. You know what? I wanted to go on our last trip, but we were pressed for time when we were at Hollywood Studios. So it's really your fault. Okay. (laughs) All right. My last headline today. Starting on March 6th, Coco is coming to Epcot, Mexico Pavilion. In a show that's going to tell the tale of Miguel and his journey to find... What, what is it going to be though? Is it going to be a ride? Is it gonna okay, be a show? it's going to be it's going to be a show by the Pavilion that's going to the story is going to be told through Mariachi Cobre, who's the mariachi bands that that's at the Pavilion and Mexican folk dancers. Okay. And there's going to be a Miguel puppet. Okay. That cool. looks that and I've seen pictures and video online. It it looks pretty crazy. I feel like I've we've seen a puppet somewhere at Disneyland. They already have it. Oh, so it's that one. I, I, think it's, I think it's basically that one. Okay. I can't confirm because... Also not breaking news, but go on. Yeah. <laughs> I, a lot of people are excited about that one. Yeah. Okay. And I feel like it fits what we're going to be talking about today, which is Coronado Springs Resort. Okay. Solid segue. Yeah. However, before we get to that, I want to go... So your segue was terrible. <laughs> My segue was terrible. But I want to continue a new segment that... Oh, that's right. That we began on episode 66, Trivia. Mm -hmm. Here's my trivia for today. And I love this because we can, like, Richie can be quizzed, but not quizzed, but more we can just, like, see, you know, just listen and watch to how he's going to react. It's more like an IQ test to see how I can potentially gather information and reasonably guess an answer. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so today we're going to um, talk about opening days for the Disneylands around around the around the world. Okay. Okay. For the Disneylands around the world. Yeah. So oh, the Disneyland okay. resorts. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Including Magic Kingdom because that's like a Disneyland style park. Okay. So I'm going to tell you what they are, and you're going to have to guess the order, and then we can go over the dates. Okay. Okay. So there's Shanghai Disneyland, Tokyo Disneyland. Hong Kong Disneyland, Magic Kingdom, Disneyland in California, and Disneyland Paris. Okay. And I can repeat those if need be. So you, 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 what do you want me to do with those six pieces of information that I can't recall? Okay. So I want you to guess which one, in the, the order of opening. The order of opening? Yeah. So starting with the... The earliest. The earliest? Yeah, because I feel like that's the easiest. <clears throat> I feel like Tokyo... Um, was second to last. Okay. I know the Shanghai one is, or so one of them in China is like the most recent. Okay. Um, Wh- which one was the first to o- ever open? Probably Paris. Um, Disneyland was the very first one in California. Oh, yeah, but I thought you said worlds. Like, I thought we were going outside of the U.S. Yeah, but I wanted to be, you know, include okay, everybody. Okay, so it was after that Paris? No, after that was Magic Kingdom. Okay. Outside now. of the outside okay, of the U.S. So now outside of the U.S. <laughs> was it Paris? No, it wasn't. What was it? It was Tokyo Disneyland in 1983. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah. So when did Paris open? So Paris opened after that in 1992. Okay. okay so then it's Disneyland, 
So it's Orlando. So it's um, Anaheim, Orlando, uh, Tokyo, Paris. Yes. And then the two Chinese ones. Yes. So which one of the Chinese ones between Hong Kong and Shanghai is the most recent? Shanghai. Yes. Okay. In Hong Kong, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> that was hard to watch. Yeah, it was very difficult <laughs> to do. <laughs> so Disneyland opened in like 1955. Magic Kingdom opened in, in 1971. Tokyo 1983. Paris in 1992. Hong Kong in 2005. And Shanghai in 2016. I feel like I'm more of a visual. So like if you're going to give me like a bunch of information I have to organize, you have to do that on, like physically on paper. I have it on or my a, computer. Or on an iPad or something. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, because that was a lot harder than it should have been. But okay, let's segue into what you want to do. So speaking of, of Coco, I'm going to use the same <laughs> yeah. segue as before. Speaking of Coco, <laughs> we're going to talk about our stay at the Coronado Springs, Springs Resort. So on our last episode, we went over our trip report where we stayed there and we kind of briefly went over Coronado Springs, but we've gotten some feedback that people want to know more about the resort. So that's what we're going to do today. So overall impressions of our stay at Coronado Springs. I loved it. just want to do this real quick. I just thought this would be funny. What are you doing? <laughs> it's You're... the uphouse floating away. <laughs> <laughs> but why are you doing that? I just thought it would be cool on video. Oh, okay. Just seeing the uphouse like kind of come, because people don't know that we have an, an, a new ornament uphouse thing here. <laughs> so now that's on video that it can fly away. Yeah, when you pick it up, it can fly away. Hey, Disney's about imagination. Yeah, you're right. I thought. Yeah, I guess. Allegedly. Is, supposedly. <laughs> okay, now we can move on. I just that's been on my mind for a while. Okay. All right. Well, <laughs> anywho, so let's let's get back into our main topic. <laughs> so Coronado Springs. So here are the basics. So it's a moderate resort, which in general, a moderate resort means that it's going to have a little bit of a larger room, so more space than a value resort like Pop Century, which we've stayed at before. Um, there's going to be sit-down restaurants instead of just like a cafeteria. There's going to be um, more elaborate pools. Um, there's going to be more amenities. And so that kind of goes into the cost of bringing it up to a moderate resort. Coronado Springs has the added... Um, factor of being a convention hotel, which you said you're not sure if you've actually been to a convention there. No, I have not been there. Oh, okay. That's for sure. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, but doesn't Pop Century have a gym? No. Okay. Did you work out there? At Pop Century? Yeah. No. <laughs> but I just see, it just seems like it had so much that it also have a gym. Yeah. And I think that that's something like just about value resorts, there's still a ton of theming and a ton of amenities that are there. It's just that maybe they're not as extensive. So I would say just if you were between a value resort and a moderate resort, if you were planning on spending more time in a moderate resort, like at the, what, what? I'm sorry, just think about the up house. It's just so funny. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I don't think we can leave it there. Easily amused. <laughs> Back to what I was saying, please. So if you were in between a value resort and a moderate resort, if you're planning on spending more time at your actual resort, then probably go with the moderate because there's there's more things to do. There's um, a lot of other activities to enjoy that aren't just like the, the regular amenities like a pool, an arcade, whatever, um, that value resorts would have anyways. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I am not sure that even though it being a moderate one, that it has more stuff. I feel like Pop Century has way cooler stuff. Mm, I think it, you're... With the exception of the gym. Yeah. Like, it has an arcade. It has... Like, Coronado has an arcade. Oh, I didn't see any of that. Yeah. Coronado does have an arcade. So that means it's equal? It's equal, <laughs> but more. Is it a is bigger what? arcade? I didn't go physically to the arcade, but I'm sure that the um, selection is comparable. Okay, because Pop Century is super fun, <laughs> and I'm just I'm just not sure if 
it seems it appears fancier, right? Mm -hmm. Like definitely, like the landscaping, like all that stuff is like it appears fancier,、mm -hmm. but it just doesn't seem that like it was actually like better. What it、sense. sounds like to me is that you maybe like the theming of Pop Century better than Coronado. Sure. Because Coronado, well, one Coronado is an older resort,、mm -hmm. first of all. Okay. But I mean, that's that's all aside that. But maybe you just find that the bright colors, the lighting of Pop Century is more、um, more to your taste than the rustic Southwest nature of Coronado. The only thing that I can see that was actually better besides theming, I'm talking about fun functionality, like functionality of this of the resorts、mm -hmm. besides theming.、Mm -hmm. The only thing that I saw that was better. Than Pop Century was the like fancy restaurant. Okay. And like they had like an espresso shop. Okay. There, Th that was apparently better. Okay. But everything else, it seems like it could have been, like for functionality purposes, it's the same. Well, no, because <laughs> first of all, I'm going to completely disagree with you on your own reasoning. Okay. You brought up espresso, Mister. I have to have coffee at eleven o'clock at night. Yeah. Pop Century wouldn't have that for I just, you. I just said that. Yeah, I know. I、But、just. Said I feel that like it was... in terms of functionality, you, you said in terms of functionality, you feel like Pop Century is better or the same. The What, same. Which did you say? I said the same, with the exception of. So that makes it better. Yeah. Okay. If it's if that's uh, uh, the only reason. <laughs> <laughs> like、it's... for functionality, the only reason. That I would pay extra whatever the thing to go to moderate for、mm -hmm. Coronado Springs would be because of the potential of espresso late at night and or attending a fancy bar like a fancy sports bar、mm -hmm. late at night.、Mm -hmm. Other than that, no difference in functionality. Functionality,、you、it appears to, fancier. Okay, but you went to the gym. There's also a salon which you did not go to, but a salon. Yeah. Okay, I didn't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> I would have、um, gone there too. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> with with your hair. <laughs> well, okay. So, listeners, we're going to move on from this little debate that we're having. <laughs> But let us know what you think. If a moderate resort is actually worth the cost, please, because I'm curious to know what everybody else thinks. Anyways, so the location of Coronado is in between. Hollywood Studios and Animal Kingdom, and I firsthand can attest just how close they are because I did ride a bus from Hollywood Studios and I rode a bus to Animal Kingdom. Each time, the bus ride was very short.、Um, the bus frequency, in terms of in terms of、um, how many buses come, is I, I didn't have to wait very long, so it does have that functionality as well. Pop Century also has buses. Yeah,、though. I was about to mention that. You left it out. <laughs> But maybe Pop Century has more people staying there using the bus system. Let's say if they have more rooms, and then you can't get on a bus as easily. Then you have to wait for another bus, even though another bus. Do like, they have more rooms? I can't attest to that. Exactly. I'm just saying. <laughs> so okay. So the way the the resort is set up is into three areas. So there's the casitas where we stayed at, the ranchos, and the cabanas, and. They're like divided in such a way where there's preferred rooms that are closer to the pool area to where the、um, the main building is. So that's going to also kind of factor into where you stay at on property and also how much you're going to pay. So I think we got one of the cheaper rooms because it was a casita and it was like、um, kind of off to the side of the lake, which there's this, the center lake. In the amongst the whole resort, and we kind of had to walk. It was maybe like a three-minute walk、mm -hmm. to the cafeteria. Richie tries to make a bigger deal of things than it really is. It wasn't that long. What the walk? The walk. No, the walk was not bad. Okay. However, okay. If you want to pay extra to be at Cornell Springs, you're also paying to be at extra risk of of like wild animals from that lake. Just saying. There does. Pop Spring, Pop Century doesn't have that. Pop Century does not have a lake. That's true, but <laughs> I mean, okay. So yeah, there's、Safer. a lake in the center, and Richie noticed the sign that says potential for alligators and snakes in the lake. Okay, so、Paying、yes, more danger. If you're okay, essentially. Okay, 
<laughs> Potentially, sure. So if you want to be safe, go to Pop Century. <laughs> oh my gosh. So there's, <laughs> let's talk about pools. The pool area, in, there's a main pool that is, that's modeled after like a Mayan temple. It's like a large pyramid. It has a long slide. There's a jaguar spirit animal that's there. Um, and then there's other, there's other pools on property in case you're, you know, staying like a, by a casita where we were, there was also like a, a more basic pool where we were staying and that people were enjoying, even though it was quite, mm-hmm. quite chilly. So I didn't see that temple pool, but that's, that's also potentially something that's better than pop century because pop century doesn't have those types of, you know, cool slides and stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So they have like kind of the more basic pools. I'll give you guys that too. You want to know something funny? When I was on Disney's site, like just kind of reading over Coronado, like the way they describe the pool area, they describe the the, the the main pool and it's okay. They describe it in very good detail, make it sound super fun. And then they describe the pools that are, that are on the, the, on the rest of property, like the more basic pools. And they're like, the way it starts is it's for the less adventurous and then it describes the pool. And I'm just like, for the less adventurous, maybe it's just like my room's here and it's cold and I don't want to walk all the way over there. Yeah. That's besides the point. <laughs> so let's talk about our room. Okay. So Coronado's recently gone undergone a major renovation. So all the rooms have... Um, um, they don't have any carpet. It's all like laminate wood look floors. There's um, two. They, were they queen or full? I don't know. I don't know. I'm trying to remember how how tight of a sleep it was for for you and I. Well, either way, there's there's two two beds in the basic room, which they do have suites there that have like a pull out sofa. They have one bedroom suites. Um, and those are probably in the buildings that are closer to where the, the more of the amenities are. Um, but we had a basic room. What I love about all the new Disney renovated, the, the rooms that Disney is renovating, and this includes Pop Century, for instance, is outlet access and USBs. Mm-hmm. There are a ton of outlets and USBs in this room. And I feel like when I, whenever I stay at a hotel, I always have that struggle, and I'm sure a lot of people have this struggle also, where you have to plug in your phone in such a way where, like, to check the time or to look at your phone in the middle of the night, like, let's say, you have to, like, get up, like, lean really far over and pick up your phone off the floor or something. Yeah. You don't have that problem here because of the outlets and USBs. Yes. Now, the room, though, was fairly similar to, like, the renovation of Pop Century, though, right? So I, I'm, I'm wondering if, like, room quality was, like, almost on par. I would say that the, I think the only main difference was, and I can't even remember what Pop Century's like, but, like, they had those sliding doors. Mm-hmm. And double sinks. And double sinks. The room is actually bigger. Is it bigger, definitely? Yeah. Because in terms of fanciness level, the same. <laughs> but, like, maybe because it was bigger, you know, that might be a difference. You also had that long desk area. So you have the two beds, and then you have underneath the TV. There's a long granite um, desk. I mean, it's it's probably what 20 feet long or so. It basically spans the whole span of the room. Yeah. And you have a chair. You have the TV overhanging it, which is a large TV. And you also have a Keurig coffee maker that has Joffrey coffee selections there. Underneath that, there's a fridge. And so every room comes also with a fridge. So if you want to put water in there to chill um there's a safe as well and then normal hotel stuff yeah yeah i'm just saying (laughs) i'm just saying you know they also had shampoo (laughs) they certainly did have shampoo that is absolutely correct so the bathroom i think that the bathroom so there is so the square footage richie is definitely more okay the bathroom, I feel like, is also a little bit bigger because you do have double sinks in this hotel. So, like I said, even though we got a basic room, we still had double sinks, and it has double sliding doors as well. So, if you're traveling with, um, there was just the two of us going, but if you were traveling with some some friends or extra people, then you can make it so that you have an extra space for changing, or you know, you wanted a little bit more privacy. Um, you can close those doors. Okay. You used an iron there, too. There was an iron. (laughs) (laughs) 
Um, so another thing that's great with the room renovation is the shower area. The shower is it, the they have accessible like handicap accessible rooms, but we didn't have one. But the shower area is like a walk-in shower um, that has uh, the the shampoo and conditioner like in large stock bottles that you can pump, and they're the Disney Sea line, whatever it is, like whatever it's called. I forget. Um, so Disney amenities there, and. I think just in general, I think the coziness, the vibe of the room was, it was awesome. It was such a comfortable stay that I was legitimately like upset that we had to leave super early the day that we left mm -hmm. because we were only there for two nights. Yeah. I forgot to mention that the theming, so it's Southwest, Southwest, America, nor Northern Mexico is the overall theme. Could look a little bit like Morocco. It could, okay. <laughs> it, Richie is under the impression that it could also look like Morocco, even though, there's the, even though there's a Mayan temple, but that's besides the point. So something that they integrated here is Panchito, who is one of the three caballeros, which did you ever see that movie when you were growing up? It was a family favorite in my house. So the three caballeros, Panchito, who is the Mexican rooster, he is one of the central Disney characters in this resort. So there's Panchitos, which is the the, um, the merchandise shop that's in the lobby. And then also in your room, you have three Caballeros artwork mm -hmm. that have Donald, Jose, and Panchito. I didn't notice any of that stuff. I pointed it out to you. I think maybe it just, you glossed over it because you, yeah. you weren't familiar. But yeah. So... I want to go over our dining experience. So okay. tell me what you thought about the the quick service areas, the cafeteria area where they you had the coffee and you had some some refrigerated items, some basic needs for the room, and then you also had like a grill station. What did you think of that area? It was cool, but um, just seemed like a regular cafeteria, like nothing crazy different. Yeah, I'm sure the food was like geared more towards like a Mexican flavor, I think. But like they had everything though. Yeah. Like they had like one selection that was like Mexican, but they had a lot of like pizza and other mm -hmm. food options. Yeah. Like they had a an area that was build your own bowl, like rice bowl type of type of thing, but they also had burgers, Philly cheese steaks. Um, I got like a roasted chicken dish with vegetables with a jalapeno cornbread, which was really, really good. That mm -hmm. was one of the options there. Um, so yeah, I mean, it was pretty, pretty basic. Nothing, nothing crazy. Um, different, I would say. Nothing mm -hmm. that would you would want to go out of your way to go there if you weren't staying there. Yes. But we also ate at um, Rick's Sports Bar and Grill, mm -hmm. which um, it's it's nice to have kind of a sit down restaurant. I think to relax at after a long day at the park. Yeah. Which is what we did. So after our first day, we went there and we were just trying to get a quick bite. And it wasn't super crowded at all. Um, our server was super nice and very knowledgeable. Um, and the menu is not huge. It has like small entrees and some appetizers and cocktails, wine and beer list, things like that. Because it it's a sports bar. Um, and I had the guacamole there, which was also very good. They make a house-made guacamole. Very, very good. Um, would you eat there again? Yes, well, because it's like your only option there. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> no, there's actually another sit-down restaurant. Where is it? It's when you remember when we entered through the, the double doors to try to get to the, oh, yeah, the cafeteria yeah. area. We didn't eat there. Yeah. Yeah. So that the bathroom is located in there, by the way. <laughs> so that's the Maya Grill. It's a Tex-Mex type of cuisine. Um, we didn't get the chance to eat there, but I've heard pretty good things about it. So maybe in the future, if we stay there again, we'll be able to. The Rick's place had the uh, had waffle fries, which were good. Yes, I got like a loaded waffle fries with like bacon and cheese. Mm. Oh my goodness! It was, good. it was just it was a nice treat, I will say. Um. Something else that I got to experience while I was there was the movie Under the Stars. And what they do is they have, it was in like, a, like a little courtyard outside of one of the buildings in, 
in the resort. And you, they have an inflatable movie screen and then they project a movie every night to, to, for guests and they put up chairs and stuff and then guests can sit down and watch the movie and it's literally under the stars. Nice. Yeah. And the night that I saw it, it was up. It was awesome. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. Oh, I know. With your up house ornament. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Oh my gosh. I can't believe you did that. (laughs) That was just so random. So I got to enjoy that. It was super relaxing and... The only th- the only criticism I would have about the movie Under the Stars is you know how during Pixar movies sometimes there's things in the credits that you might want to see like little animations or like a continuation of the story of some kind they um, they just cut the credits off and I was like oh my gosh okay that's fine I'll leave yeah it's unfortunate and they have a karaoke night the oh, day that cool. we left was going to be karaoke night I'm super upset yeah. It's like the second time in the last month that somebody's restricted me from doing karaoke. Sorry. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> and just so you know, if it's raining, they bring the movie under the stars indoors. They bring it into the cafeteria area, which is the, the first night that we got there. It was a little bit drizzly. So that, and they were showing, it looked like Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, they were showing it in the, indoors instead of outdoors. So you'll be able to watch the movie regardless. Yeah. Yeah. Um... So that was our stay. What are your your final impressions of the resort before I go over kind of what the construction improvements are going to be? My final impression? Mm-hmm. I mean, it was it was good. I think it was good. But I would stay at Pop Century, but that was, was exactly good. my question. Okay, you wouldn't stay there again if Pop Century was an option. It depends on how much the savings were. If the savings were significant, I would stay at Pop Century. Okay. Because I I didn't see a huge difference. Okay. That is an honest opinion, and I like that. Yeah. So, you know what I actually read? People prefer not to stay at convention hotels because it gets overrun with convention people. Yeah, especially, like, imagine if you got, like, stuck there, you know, during mm-hmm. a convention. It's just yeah. going to be super packed. Like, all the stuff that we said, like, oh, wasn't that busy? Oh, it was super fine. Like, that whole experience would be completely different. <laughs> but you know what? I almost like it because... I like like the people watching of all these different people with their name badges walking around, and I'm like, oh, hey, Mary, that works for, you know, conglomerate X, whatever. Yeah, but I don't think people that are going to Disney want to see that. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's true. So, yeah. Anyways, there are there's major construction going on right now. Um, a part of all of that was the room renovations. Now that's pretty much over. And they're building a 15-story tower of more rooms that are going to include more suites and things like that. There's going to be a rooftop restaurant that they're already taking reservations for called Toledo. Oh, that sounds cool. Yeah, so it's gonna be 15 stories up and- That'll make it much better than Pop Century probably. (laughs) So we'll have to do a a reboot, a restay. Um, So they're already taking reservations for that and you're probably gonna have views of Animal Kingdom and and Hollywood Studios since they're so close. Another thing that they're building as a part of all this is the in the center of the lake that that Richie hates and is so terrified of. They're building a restaurant. <laughs> oh yeah, I saw that. <laughs> so but they're building looks- a restaurant like on like stilts, like wood, like looks like wooden stilts. I'm sure they're made of sturdy material though. Um, that is going to be there. Yeah. Yeah. But it looks safe though. It looks like there's no animals that can creep up into that thing. Supposedly. Possibly snakes. <laughs> the alligators wouldn't be able to get in there. Yeah, it's cool actually because that's going to be called three bi- three bridges bar and grill. So there's probably literally going to be three bridges that connect all to that center area. Yeah. So that's going to be pretty cool. Um, and a side note, if we would have had more time, it, like more more time that we were staying there, it seems like a very peaceful resort minus the construction. A very peaceful resort for a nice jog because it's a nice loop around mm-hmm. the whole resort. Um, so yeah. For any runners out there. Cool. I enjoyed our stay. That's it. Okay. <laughs> That's it? That's all I got. Okay, cool. All right, well, hopefully everyone enjoyed that episode about Cordell Springs. And, you know, make sure when you go there to remember it's not Morocco. It's a uh, it's Mexican style. <laughs> Southwest and Mexican. Yeah. <laughs> so <clears throat> make sure to follow us on all your favorite social media platforms. Tune into our Alexa briefing. 
Yes. Subscribe. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. Yes. And of course, as always, thank you so much for listening. We hope this brought a little bit of magic to your day and we'll see you next time. Goodbye.